So, our first real task is to create a chessboard for our pieces to sit on. There are a few opportunities to learn about good topology, but we'll keep it simple so we can get on with the more interesting modeling challenge of making the pieces. Firstly, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple board, and then a slightly more complicated one which solves a few minor problems and offers a little more control of the texture and curvature. So start Blender and create a new general file. We'll save it straight away by pressing Control S and typing chessboard. Hit enter and just press save blend file. We won't use the default cube this time so it can be deleted by selecting it and hitting delete. Now let's press shift and A to bring up the add menu and add a mesh plane. I can scroll my mouse wheel forward to move uh, a little closer to it and press F2 and rename it to chess board. Because we'll be adding some simple materials here, we should change the viewport shading in the top right hand corner of the 3D view to material preview, which will just allow us to see the materials we apply in the 3D viewport. In fact, let's set up the materials for the chessboard before we begin modeling. Over in the material properties window, which is this red ball at the bottom of the properties window, click the new button and rename this material to black square. This material is now applied to our plane, and if we click the base color and move the luminance slider all the way down to zero, we can see it change to black in our 3D view. Now click on the plus button at the top of this panel to add a new material slot. An object can have many materials, and a chessboard needs at least two for the black and white squares. We can decide which faces use which material later. So now that we have this slot, again click new to create a new material in that slot and rename it to white square. We can just leave this material's properties as they are for now. It's already white. This material is not yet applied to any part of our object, but we will assign it later. This is good enough for now. There's not much point in changing any of the properties until we can see them on the board. So let's make the board by moving into the 3D view, making sure the object's selected, and pressing Tab to go to Edit Mode. If we now right-click and select Subdivide, you'll see that it subdivides the geometry into four squares. If we do this another two times, we'll end up with our 8x8 chessboard arrangement. We could have just subdivided once and changed the number of cuts to 7 in the properties box which comes up here, but I think uh, right-clicking three times is, is just slightly faster. Now change to face select mode by pressing 3 on the number line, and from the menu, choose select, and then checker deselect. This deselects every other face, leaving us with a chessboard arrangement. Now we can apply the white material in the properties panel by making sure that the white square material selected and choosing Assign, which makes all of the selected faces white. Now press Alt and A in the 3D view to deselect everything and we can change some simple properties of the materials to make the board look a little bit better. I'm going to make sure the white material is selected and then I'm just going to change the roughness down here to 0.1. Then I'm going to select the black square material and I'm going to change both the specular and and the roughness to 0.1. Very simple changes. As we move around the 3D view holding the middle mouse button, we can see some reflections across the board, and that's good enough for now. We'll add some more interesting materials in a later tutorial, but feel free to experiment now. Now, still in edit mode, press A to select everything, and we can give the board some thickness by pressing E to extrude, and then just type 0.1, which moves it up in the Z axis, giving it some thickness. Now we want to round off the edges and corners by adding a bevel modifier. And we can use the drop down menu in the add modifier properties window, which is the small blue wrench. And just click it and choose bevel. Now as always with the bevel modifier, we want to change the segments to an even number, as odd numbers create triangles and we don't want triangles. So change that to 2 to avoid that problem. Now the bevel modifier is actually changing the underlying geometry. And we don't want that, we want to add control loops. So if you open up the profile section, and change the super ellipse shape to 1, you'll find that the bevel is still applied correctly, but now the subdivision surface modifier will handle the curvature, which is what we usually want in subdivision surface modeling. So it looks as though we have no bevel, but if we press tab to go to object mode, and then press control and 3 to add a subdivision surface modifier with a level of 3, right click in the 3D view and choose shade smooth, we can see the result. Now I think the edges are a little too soft, so I'm going to reduce the bevel amount to somewhere between 0.02 and 0.05. Let's use 0.04, which I think looks quite good. 
We can now apply this bevel modifier by hovering over it in the modifier properties and pressing Control A. And that's it for the symbol board. It's good enough for the job in hand, but it does have some problems. If we tab into edit mode and press 2 to go to edge select mode, we can alt click one of these control loops at the edges and see that pressing GG controls the softness at the edge, but it also changes the shape of the squares. And uh, that is not really what we want. If we wanted very soft corners and edges, then our, our squares become very misshapen. In fact, even if we didn't move them at all, we can see that the edges of the, the checkered pattern don't match up with the geometry correctly. And that's because of these control loops here. We can fix that in the more advanced version. Another very minor problem we can see on the corners is that the corners themselves are actually three spoked poles. They have three edges coming from the vertices. And we would much rather they were four spoked poles so that the light flows around the corners more correctly. Now this board would be good enough for our chess set and if you don't want to tackle the more advanced board this will be fine. But since we can improve it, we will. So tab back to object mode, move this one to the side and let's start again. Now it is a lot more complicated than the simple beveled option, but it offers a lot more control and solves some rendering and material issues. The first steps are the same, so let's press Shift and A to add a mesh plane, and press F2 and call it Better Chessboard. Back over in the Materials panel, from this small drop-down box which looks like a sphere, choose Black Square, and we can see it's turned black in the 3D view. Then press the plus sign again to get a, a new material. And this time from the drop down box, select white square. Since they're already set up, we don't really have to do anything more there. We can press tab to go into edit mode, right click and press subdivide. Do that three times in total. Gives us this eight by eight grid. And then we press three to go to face select mode. So let's do that again and choose select, check it deselect. And then over in the material properties with white square selected, click assign. And again, we have our chessboard arrangement. This time though, we got a few extra steps before we extrude the board. So it's still in face select mode, hit A on the keyboard to make sure everything is selected and then press I to activate the inset tool and move the mass inwards a little way. Don't worry about its exact placement as we're gonna change that in this properties panel, which appears. Make sure that boundary, offset even and Offset relative are all checked, and then in the thickness, type 0.5. And this moves the squares to a good position to allow us to place control loops ourselves. Notice that the position of the texture hasn't changed as we did that. Now we'll add what we call holding loops around the details of our squares to make sure that the edges of the squares don't change size when we add control loops to control the curvature. Start by pressing Control R to add a loop between these two edges at a corner of the object. Now Blender will default to making the loop match the shape, but that's not what we want. After you've left click to confirm the loop, immediately press E to force the loop to match one of the surrounding edges. You'll see a small red dot appear, which means it's considering that edge when aligning the loop. If the loop's not straight, press F and it'll flip to the other edge and it'll turn straight. Don't move the mouse at this point because that can cause several problems. So left click again, don't right click, you need to left click at this point. And it's best at this point to check that the factor says 0, 0.000. This ensures that the cut is placed exactly halfway between its two surrounding edges. Now we need to repeat this process uh, going around the board for the other three edges. So control R, left click, press E to consider the edges. If it's straight, just left click again, move around to another side and press control R, left click, E. This one needs to be flipped, so press F and then left click again and then there's one final edge to do here press Control r left click press e and left click again so we've created holding loops here to make sure the size of our edge squares don't change if we uh, when we add our control loops we need to do the same for all of the internal squares and we can do that a little more quickly just by hovering over any square pressing Control r and rolling the mouse until there are three lines and just left click and then right click and do that for every square so Press Control R, roll the mouse, left click, right click. Control R, roll the mouse, left click, right click, and just keep doing that. Now the, the very center line in each square is, is not performing any function, it's just adding unnecessary geometry. So if we Alt click to select one, and then Shift, Alt and click all of the other center loops, we can then press X and press Dissolve Edges, and that gets rid of those. Now we need to do the same for the squares running in the other direction. So 
again just add the three loops along each one as I mentioned this board is a little more complex but in order to solve some problems then this is the kind of geometry you need lots of holding loops to keep things in place again alt click to select a loop and then shift alt and click all the other center loops press X and dissolve edges and we are left with all of the holding loops we need to keep everything in place on a chessboard. None of these loops will be moved at any point. Now we can start adding our control loops to control the tightness of the corners, uh, which we'll add one at a time by pressing Control R between the very first segment on a corner. Control R, just left click and right click to place it. Now, as we've done before, I like to borrow some functionality from the UV system by right clicking and pressing Mark Scene, which just turns it red. Now we can go around and add the others. So we need one there, and right click and mark scene. And over here we need one there, right click and say mark scene. And then the final one just over here. So right click and mark scene. Now those four loops are going to be control loops, which control the curvature over a corner. Now there is other areas of curvature we can control. So if we add another loop which goes all around the edge of the board and mark that as a seam, that's all of the control we need over the top of the board. And with that done, we can now press A to select everything then E to extrude and type 0.1 to give our board some thickness. Now we need to add some more control loops just around the edge. And if we press Control R, roll the mouse until there are two, right click to confirm the placement of those and again, we uh, right click and press mark seam so that they're red. And that's the geometry of our board finished. It does look complicated, but it has solved several problems. If we tab to object mode and press control three to add our subdivision surface modifier, right click and select shed smooth, then we can see our board has good curvature with the light flying over the corners correctly. We've got a lot of control over this curvature without affecting the overall shape of the board or the sizes of the individual squares. If I alt click to select one of our control loops, and, and slide it around, you'll see that we're changing the curvature on the very corner without changing the shape or position of any of the squares. So we can make the edges very round and our squares always stay in exactly the same place. I'm just gonna leave them where we initially put them. I quite like the way that board looks. I might select these two and scale them in Z by pressing S, Z, and then just scaling them up just to change the tightness at the top. You can play with all of these control loops to affect the shape and none of the square sizes will change, whatever you do. Now, if we change to solid shading and change to shade flat, we can see that our edges have a good topology for the light to flow over. And if we compare that to the other board, you can see that the light is drawn to kind of a, a more of a point rather than flowing around the corner. So the geometry of our advanced board is finished. Set that back to shade smooth. All we need to change now are the dimensions so that it matches real world scale. If we press N to open the N panel, and we can see that uh, it's two meters long. Uh, I'm gonna make mine 60 centimeters, which I can do by typing 60 and then CM, 60 centimeters. And I can see that this changes it to a scale of 0.3. If I change the scale for the others, Y and Z to 0.3, then the board will maintain its shape, but it will be a much more sensible size. So now press Control A, and apply all transforms and that's our board finished we can delete the other board if we uh, unless you use that board that's fine and we can save our scene and that's the board done next we're going to move on to creating one of the pieces our first piece will be the pawn it's the easiest of the pieces but there's a lot to learn there 